All right. Hey, gang. Uh, this one got off to a little bit better start than yesterday. Seems to have, anyway. Uh, for those who were here yesterday, you got quite a show as I fumbled and bumbled around. I actually managed to somehow, still haven't quite figured out yet how I did this, uh, I was I was like streaming for about 30 minutes on some other live stream somewhere else in the world. And so a whole bunch of people were watching me sit here, struggle and fumble and act like a tool. So uh, that was a lot of fun, but it looks like I got it a little bit more straightened out today. So yay, good for us. Here we go. I'm seeing some people in the chats. Uh, let me see how many people we got right now. 28. Yeah, good enough. Um, so let's uh, start out by, I want to call out some people who commented yesterday. Um, I also got, I'll, you know what, I'll start with, I got a super chat from Mike Whittington. And I want to thank Mike for that. He is the hero of the day. Uh, for those of you who, I got to just give you a little quick rundown. The, the super chat thing, if you're interested, uh, it's a way to kind of put, basically put a tip in the tip jar, let your chat show up, and uh, I, it gets seen, and, and I get noticed, and, and I'll give you a call out tomorrow if I don't give you a call out right now. I'll give you a call out tomorrow, too. I'll call you out however you want to be called out. I'm cheap like that. But if you want to do it, if you look down just below the chat thing, there's a little dollar sign, very funky looking dollar signs like it's in a suitcase or something but anyway you click on that and just throw whatever you want to in there it is much appreciated all goes towards improving this channel and how I do things so um, so yesterday I talked about fear and I talked about uh, how you can use fear to kind of guide you to expand your comfort zone and that kind of thing um, I got a couple of comments I want to call out <laughs> one of them is from Donald Trump who I'm seeing in the uh, in the chat over here. I don't think it's the real Donald Trump. This guy seems a bit more reasonable. Uh, just saying. Uh, hey, Justin Shillington, thank you. Just go, oh, awesome dude, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, okay, so uh, again, on the topic of public speaking, I made the point that, um, that we, uh, a lot of people tend to fear public speaking even more than death. So uh, I'm just gonna read his, his, uh, his uh, comment real quick, because I thought it was really good. He said, the reason we're scared of public speaking is that we evolved in small tribes and our survival depended on the acceptance of the tribe. Saying something to the whole tribe of 150 people and having them think you're stupid could literally result in death by social, ca social castigation. Good word. That's how I know you're not the real Donald Trump. You use big words like that. Uh, you couldn't survive without the big tribe back then. Those of us that survived did so with genes that are acutely aware of how other people perceive us. Having people like you and think you're cool and sex worthy and stuff is literally the most important thing to us after uh, the physiological survival. If we are not chased by a tiger in the current moment, then we are most likely worrying about how other people perceive us. It's a survival mechanism, but once you escape it, you feel freer than a bird. It's a beautiful thing. Um, I think that's an interesting... Uh, I'm making noise here. Sorry about that. I think that's an interesting uh, perspective from a psycho, uh, from an evolutionary standpoint. Neil Brooks, two pounds. You suit the beard. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, everybody, uh, clapping for Neil Brooks. Thank you for that. Um, back to it. Yeah, I think that's an interesting perspective um, for, to look at things from evolu an evolutionary standpoint. Is always a smart way of looking at things. So I appreciate that comment. Good for you. Thank you. Um, another one I wanted to call out real quick. Jake Cargile. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got, got a flam issue going on. That's how you know we're live. Uh, he said, I would agree with your statement. People fear public speaking more than death. I had to take the required public speaking class in college and was told that I sound like a robot and stutter a bit. Uh, I've tried to push myself into more public speaking as time has gone on, but unfortunately I still have some of the same problems. I definitely fear public speaking more than death. Uh, and then he followed up with, how do you keep so cool, calm, and collective on live streams? Any tips? Well, I'll tell you what, when I figure it out, I'll let you know. Because I'm still not quite there yet. I still bumble and fumble quite a bit. Maybe by the end of the month I'll have it all figured out. And I, and I really think it's just a matter of doing it, honestly. So we'll, we'll see. But um, there were some other comments, but um, I'm going to try to keep this video a bit shorter than yesterday. Actually, a lot shorter than yesterday. We went for almost 40 minutes yesterday, and I really want to keep these to around 10 or 15. So, um, so I'm going to jump right in to the topic at hand. You guys were here to talk about... Oh, and by the way, uh, you guys, go ahead and chat in the live chat. I'm just going to um, go ahead and go into my topic and do what I'm, I'm, I'm here to talk about and uh, try not to get too wrapped up in what's going on in the chat. 
at the end of me talking about the topic, uh, I will open it up for Q&A and I'll answer your chats and we'll talk uh, then. So I'm not ignoring you, I'm just ignoring you. Now that we've got that situated. All right, so uh, chimeras. Some of you may have heard of chimeras. A chimera is basically a human-animal hybrid. Actually, it's not even a human-animal hybrid. It's just a hybrid of two different animals. And um, it's something that scientists have been working on for a while now. Um, there's a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding them. In fact, let me, uh, let me show you something here. I think I figured out a little trick on my little live stream. Um, this is what you usually see when you hear about chimeras is a little pig-animal hybrid guy like this. And uh, by the way, or here's another one that I found. People, when people see chimeras, they see something like this. They, see, they think of things like centaurs. They think of things like uh, griffins and stuff like that. This image right here, the one, the, the pig baby person guy, um, <laughs> this was actually a thumbnail on the one and only Alex Jones's page. And uh, I think the title of the video is something like government researchers are creating Dr. Moreau human-animal hybrids and stuff. So for all of those out there that think I use clickbait, get bent, because that's clickbait. So um, the Chimera thing so far has mostly been taking things like, uh, you know, certain DNA and cells from, say, uh, fireflies or jellyfish or, or other kinds of uh, bioluminescent creatures, putting them into test cells so that they can find defects and, and trace the way cells are growing in organisms and stuff like that. It's always been for more research purposes and whatnot. Um, but the reason why we are, or scientists are, researching chimeras and are looking into this technology and this advancement is because of organ donation or, or organ, organ transplant issues. So 22 people die every single day on the organ donor waiting list. That's a lot of people. And there are some organs, obviously like kidneys, even livers, you can take a part of a liver and transplant that. Uh, we all have two kidneys, so you can donate a kidney. But other organs, which also happen to be the ones we need to survive, I mean, we, I guess we need them all to survive, but other organs like hearts, lungs, pancreas, uh, full livers, things like that, um, you need somebody else to die before you can take that. And as our lifespans are increasing, as our technology advances and our med medicine gets better, people are living longer, it's a lot harder to get those organs. So, the Shangri-La would be, Shangri-La, that's not even right. I don't know my phrases, would be to actually be able to create human available organs in a lab somewhere. Now, there's been a lot of talk over the years about stem cells being able to just like rebuild somebody's, you know, like if, if, your, if your lungs were failing or if your, if your spleen was failing, let's, your pancreas, let's go with pancreas. If your pancreas was failing, then they could just build you a new pancreas in a lab off of your own stem cells and then put it right back in there. Now that would be great. We're nowhere near that though. And like you can't just build a pancreas in a petri dish somewhere. It has to be grown in an organism of some kind. So um, th then you get started talking about things like cloning. Like could you clone another you <laughs> with all the organs that you might need throughout your life? That's been the basis of some sci-fi movies. It was a Michael Bay movie, The Island. That's what it was called. I was trying to think of it earlier and I couldn't remember it, The Island was a Michael Bay movie that was based on that premise. But, um, but if you were able to grow these inside of a pig or a cow, well, you know, we're, we're already <laughs> using them for meat. If you were able to grow organs with them that we could use, that would save millions of lives every year. So obviously there's a huge benefit to doing something like that. Um, so scientists... Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm kind of going through a, an article that I've linked in the description. I don't know if you can see it while I'm doing the. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can see it while I'm doing the live stream, but uh, Darth Id just just gave me three euro, man. Thank you as a co as a compensation for ad block usage on your vids. Uh, hey, why are you doing that? I don't blame you. Actually, watch this. Still up there. 
Darth Id, this is actually the Hunter S. Thompson Gonzo logo, and everybody keeps asking me if I'm a Hunter S. fan, which I guess I'm not any more than anybody else, but Darth Id, old school fan, dude, I appreciate it. Um, this is why I can't respond to live stream stuff, I get all turned around. Um, but anyway, so, where was I? Damn it. Oh, damn it. Anyway, so the ethical dilemmas around chimeras are pretty obvious. If, uh, what people are afraid of is that you're going to have human DNA mixed up with animal DNA, and you're going to, you know, basically have, you know, you start to get into all kind of metaphysical arguments. Do they have souls? Are we actually killing human-type people when you do this? Um, of course, nobody wants that. But we're so far away. Like, obviously, if you had a human brain inside a pig, then that pig would have a consciousness, and it would still, it would be, like, that would be terrible. So, um... But we're really far away from that. What scientists have been able to do so far, let me just show you this. So they, um, they were able to get rat-mice rat hybrids. That's what you're looking at right there. I mean, it doesn't, it's, it's just a rat-mouse. Um, or a mouse-rat. Any fans of uh, Parks and Rec? That's mouse-rat. Um, but here's the, the thing they were able to do. They were actually able to, this was at the Salk Institute. They were able to get human organs or human stem cells to grow inside of a pig embryo. And it didn't last very long. I want to say it only lasted about like a couple of weeks, maybe. So it didn't grow to term, and there's not like a, a pig out there with human organs in it or anything. But that is the, uh, that is the goal. That is what they want to do. So um, we're pretty far away from it. We're definitely way far away from any kind of human consciousness inside an animal uh, that's being slaughtered and we're using. Donald Trump just gave me ten dollars. All right. Uh, feel bad about talking bad about you now. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's very nice. Because you're Donald and you're rich. You're you're a parody and I love it. So uh, so that's basically where we are. One little. Uh, twist that was kind of put on this in terms of the ethical thing. There was a, a scientist, let me look it up right quick. I've got it on my computer over here. I said right quick. That's how you know I'm from Texas. Um, who was the guy's name? Jun Wu of the Salk Institute, who is the, the lead author of the study that was published on this. He tried to put a different spin on the whole ethical thing, and he, he talked about how, like, back in the day, um, chimeras, like griffins, like dragons, like uh, centaurs and whatnot, uh, they were considered gods and angels in uh, the religions of the, of the day. So he's basically trying to compare that with what's going on now. That if you can create these kinds of chimeras that could save millions of lives, then that is almost like a guardian angel out there that's, that's, uh, that's saving people's lives and making the world a better place. So I think that's interesting. It's a neat little spin on it, and I think that's where I'm going to end this. I'm going to open up the floor to questions, see what you guys think about it. If you're watching live, um, you can chat about it right here in, uh, in the chat, and I'll start responding to what you guys are doing. Knowing, again, there's a, a huge delay, nothing I can do about that. I'm looking into it. There might be some solution there. Um, but if you're not watching it live, please uh, respond in the comments and chat about it in the comments. The real point of what I'm doing this February with these live streams, I want to just kind of like bring up topics and let you guys discuss, and uh, if the discussions are good, maybe they'll become their own videos. We'll see later on. But uh, anyway, so I'm now clicking back over to the live streams. Going to respond to what you guys have to say. Oh, and by the way, so we've been going about 16 minutes right now. This is the plan. I really wanted to be more like 10 to 15 minutes. I'm probably running a little bit over right now, what I really want to be doing. Yesterday's was just ridiculously long. But hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll get more into a, into a flow here. So Darth Ed says, as long as pigs don't get human brains, you don't see the moral issue. So that's, that's the argument for, and that's what a lot of people are saying. And, and we're, we're so far away from that, I really uh, think it's not something we're going to be seeing and worrying about anytime soon. But even when it gets to that point, I don't see any reason to give them human brains. Um, I could see a lot of people getting concerned about, I mean, you hear people complaining about uh, GMOs now and they're afraid of what GMOs do to the body and whatnot. Uh, just imagine what people are going to be saying 
when you're eating an animal that might have human DNA in it. It's, it's going to get weird. And not to say that, not to say that we're going to be eating these animals that we're getting the organs from, but you know, it would be handy if we're already kind of, you know, eating animals like pigs and cows and whatnot, uh, that we could just take their organs and use them in that way. It's kind of a weird thought. <laughs> now, what do you think of that? Uh, my problem is I would want to taste one mm -mm bacon, says Justin. I agree. Heathen just gave me a dollar. Thank you, sir. Or ma'am. It's hard to say. Heathens could go both ways. But it's very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, that beard, though, says Bram. Bram Heeson. Am I saying that? Heeson? You've been around a while. You were an OG answer file. And I love it. Thank you. Um... Let's see. What else we got? What else we got in the comments? I'm going to go for like uh, three or four more minutes, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Hey, my buddy Tom Mills, the issue of the soul is interesting. Would we have human bacon? Uh, somewhere out there is somebody who has eaten human bacon, I guarantee you. Somewhere in the Amazon or something like that. Maybe Jeffrey Dahmer. Why not just grow the muscle directly? No need for the entire animal. Uh, I think that's on the table. You know, again, um, you know, they were talking about the, they have like sort of collagen. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, what's the word when you're working on a construction project and you have scaffolding? Thank you. There you go. I had a brain fart. Uh, they can make kind of collagen scaffoldings that you can then put stem cells around and you can kind of grow organs that way. There, there's, there's a lot of research going that direction because then you wouldn't have any of the ethical dilemmas. Uh, but they haven't quite gotten to where those are functional. It's just kind of like basically lumps of liver cells, not necessarily a working liver. So there, there's still a long way to go for that. Uh, let's see. Free Saxon. They say that meat will be grown commercially in trays in the near future from stem cells. So why is there a need for growing human organs within pigs or creating hybrids? I just kind of spoke to that. Um, I'm, a, I'm actually very curious what lab-grown meat tastes like. I know there's some out there. Maybe I could find some and give it a try. I could do it on camera. I'll probably just throw away, throw up all over the place. Um, Bertrand says, please don't, guys. I just deleted the phone. I'm just talking about there. Okay. Um, Heathen asked, and I shall answer. Hey, Joe, love what you do, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, what do you think of the increased animal intelligence through cybernetics? Sounds science fiction, but I've read that it may be possible. Um... I don't know much about that uh, through cybernetics. This sounds like uh, Planet of the Apes type stuff because they make the apes super smart and then they take over the world. That's what's going to happen, man. That's why you don't do it. Don't do it, man. Um, increased animal intelligence through cybernetics. I got no clue. Uh, you, you stumped me. I'll have, to, I'll have to think through that one. <laughs> this, is, this is the problem with having really smart followers is you ask questions that I... I can't answer, because you're smarter than me sometimes. Uh, what else we got going on? Supposedly the lab-grown meat isn't very tasty or a good consistency yet, says William Bohm. I imagine, it, I imagine it's slop. Oh, by the way, has anybody seen um, Snowpiercer? Have you seen Snowpiercer? If you haven't seen Snowpiercer, fantastic movie. It's a great science fiction movie uh, where the entire survival, surviving people in the human race are on... Uh, on a train that keeps going around the world. Kind of a crazy premise, but it's great. Uh, Drake Zero, $5. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Uh, you didn't even have to do that. You're a Patreon, aren't you? Aren't you on Patreon? What are you doing Give me more money? What are you, crazy? I don't deserve that, but thank you very much. Uh, but no, so in Snowpiercer, they, um, it's, there's sort of a, uh, Soylent Green type thing. I'm not giving too much away. I don't want to spoil anything, but they, they have like protein bars that they eat, and it's just like sort of, it's almost like jello mush that, that they eat, and then you find out later. It's, I'm not giving the whole thing away, but they, it's, it's made out of people. The protein's made out of people. And that honestly made me not want to ever have to just eat protein bars <laughs> and synthetic meat. The whole thing just sounds bull to me. Um, okay, guys, um, a little extra. Thanks, Drake. I appreciate that. Guys, I gotta, I gotta go. Um, I wanted to keep these shorter and I'm already going over 20 minutes. Uh, in the future, I'm going to try to crank them down to 10, 15, uh, just little nuggets, see how they go. But 
Wow, 63 people watching right now, and you guys are in the comments, and you're chatting, and I'm getting oh, I'm so much love. This is so great. Oh, man, this is so great. This went way better than yesterday. I'm, I'm having a blast. Um, I'm still working on a few things that might improve this in the future in terms of uh, actually using my regular camera. I've got a really nice microphone that I might swing over and be more like a radio show instead of this thing that's like giving you some of this. Loving that. Um, Anyway, so tomorrow's subject, I'll go ahead and tease it. What have I got tomorrow? What am I going to talk about tomorrow? Tomorrow I'm going to talk about a really cool thing that I just saw, or saw, read, heard in a podcast. It's called uh, chronotypes, that different people function on different schedules throughout the day. It has to do with the uh, biorhythms and what's the, what's the circadian rhythms of... Uh, of our bodies and how we're all kind of wired a little bit differently. It was a really interesting topic and I just thought I would talk about it and get you guys to talk about it as well. So that's it for me for today. See you guys tomorrow. Love you so much and um, have a great rest of your day and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.